So here, uh, the information they give us is that uh, it tells us to sketch a graph of the function on the domain negative 5 to 5. So that's given to us by this. So meaning that this only goes as far as negative 5, and it includes points all the way to 5. Secondly, it tells us that there are three x-intercepts at x is equal to negative 3, x is equal to 0, and x is equal to 3. So if I wanted to go ahead and start graphing that, um, I could already graph my three x-intercepts. I know it's at x is equal to negative 3, so that's at 1, 2, 3 to the left. x is equal to negative 3 right there. Uh, x is equal to 0, so right here. And then x is equal to 3 right about right here. So those are my three intercepts. One at x is equal to negative 3. One is equal to x is equal to 0 and x is equal to 3. The next thing it tells us is that there is an absolute maximum at uh, negative 5 comma 5. So this means that this is going to be the highest point in the graph and there's an absolute minimum at 5 comma negative 5. So that is the lowest point in the graph. So they tell us that those points are at negative 5 comma 5. So um, negative 5 comma 5 is at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 to the left because negative 5 and then we go, oh, sorry, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and then go 5 up, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So this is our absolute maximum at negative 5 comma 5 and then our absolute minimum is at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So right here at 5 comma negative 5. So we have our key points here which they told us to graph. Um, we have our absolute maximum right here, absolute minimum right here, and our x-intercepts. So part of this is that uh, you have a little bit of freedom of how to graph the slopes. The slopes are not constant, um, and that is something to keep in the back of your mind. So the next thing is that we, where do we start? Do we start where the function increases in the interval of negative two to two? Well, I would actually skip this step. I would actually go straight to where this starts. So we know that this starts at negative five. So it actually look for where it starts. And you can see that the first place where it starts is at x is equal to negative five and uh, to x is equal to negative two. So this tells us that the function decreases, meaning that we're going to have a slope that looks something like this, decreasing. Um, and so we want to decrease from the value of negative 5 all the way down. And you want to make sure that as you're decreasing, you're passing through each of your x-intercepts. So the, since I'm decreasing from negative 5 to negative 2, I want to make sure that as I pass negative 3, I also pass through... Um, you can see that I pass through uh, x equals negative 3. So I want to make sure that I don't skip it by going before or skip it by going after. I want to make sure that I also pass through that point. Um, you can have your slope end or your point end somewhere right here. It doesn't really matter. We just want to know that this point decreases, but we know that it doesn't decrease below our absolute minimum. So your graph might look slightly different, but that's okay. So the next thing is that after it decreases from x is equal to negative 5 and it decreases where x is equal to negative 2, then it's going to increase, because here we want to see it increases at x is equal to negative 2 and x is equal to 2. Okay? So it increases from x is equal to, to negative 2, and so we pick off where we stopped and then we increase. And you can see again that I'm going to make sure that I pass through my intercept. So I'm going to increase, increase, increase. It doesn't matter how far I increase it to. Uh, the real only uh, limiting factor is I cannot increase it past my absolute maximum. So I cannot increase this higher than this point here. And the only reason is because that is my absolute maximum. Again, your slope could only increase up to this point right here. It doesn't need to increase as much, um, but again, it just has to increase. So again, we just want to make sure that one, we pass through our x-intercepts, and then two, that this line is increasing, but it doesn't matter how far you increase it or how high you increase it. The slope can differ. Um, so after we've increased it to where, where x is equal to two, again, that's the x value is equal to two, then we can pick off again. 
where we left off. This is now going back to decreasing. And you can see that if we finish, it decreases from x is equal to 2 to x is equal to 5. So we're going to decrease from this x value of 2. And we're going to keep decreasing, decreasing, decreasing all the way to the value where x is equal to 5. And you can see finally we have finished our graph. And that's it for this graph right here.